Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on installing vCenter single sign-on with vSphere 5.1. So first up, just make sure you've got your vCenter installer open, as you can see here on the screen, and just go down to vCenter single sign-on. So as you can see with the single sign-on on the right hand side, there are a few prerequisites. So we need to have Microsoft.NET 3.5 SP1, Windows Installer 4.5, and SQL Server 2008 R2 Express, SP1 database, but this is only required if you don't have one of the supporting databases running in the background. So let's click install. Select yes. English, United States, normal stuff. Click OK. So the install wizard begins. We're just going to simply click next. Click next again accept the license agreement and click next. Now here as you can see we have got three options. So we can create a primary node for a new vCenter single sign-on, can join an existing one, or we can recover an installed instance. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is just installing a single instance of single sign-on. Uh, and because this is the first one in my vSphere environment, I'm just going to be selecting create the primary node for a new vCenter single sign-on installation and click next. So as I mentioned before in this tutorial, we're just going to be installing the basic version, single sign-on. It's only going to be installed on a single server. But as you can see here, you have the option to also install for high availability or a multi-site single sign-on installation. So just select which one you would like to do. For this one, I'm just going to select the basic. I'm going to click Next. Now this default admin user created here is going to be the administrator that's being used to manage the single sign-on server. So I'm just going to enter in my password here and confirm it and click next. Now here we've got two options. We can either install Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 Express as a separate instance or as its own instance or we can use an existing supported database. So I'm going to be using an existing one. In the background I've got SQL 2008 R2 running. And as you can see here, when I select use an existing supported database, it tells you you must create table spaces for the database before you can proceed with the installation. So to create these tables, they've provided you with the script. So the script is running off the vSphere 5.1 DVD. And if we just go to the DVD here and open it up, I'll just move my window over here so you can see. So as you can see, it's the source directory, and then we're looking at single sign on. DB scripts, SSO server, schema, and then your flavor of database. So we're running MS SQL. So I'm just going to double click on that. And the SQL query that we're looking for is this one here RSA IMS Lite MS SQL setup table spaces.sql. So what I'm going to do is just copy that across to my SQL server. So now the file's copied across. Let's go back to the wizard and let's just click next. Okay, so now we're at the installation screen where it's asking us for all of our database details. Our host name, our database name, ports, usernames, authentication, etc. So let's just go over to our SQL server. And let's browse over to where we've copied the SSO script. So here it is here. I'm going to open my SQL server management studio. Connect. So as you can see here, I've just got my standard vCenter database. So just to give you a bit of background, I'm running vCenter 5.0 at the moment. I've not upgraded to 5.1. So the SSO installation is the first part of our upgrade path. So I'm just going to go back to my script and let's just double click on it. So when I double click on it, the script opens up in SQL Server Management Studio. And if you read through here, what it says is, in the script, there's some C colon backslash change me directories that we need to change to where we would like to install the database files. And you can see that here. So this is going to be the database files here, rsa underscore data dot mdf and so on, index and a translog dot ldf. So we're going to change this change me to default installation directory. So my default installation directory, I believe is
is going to be just in program files and Microsoft SQL, MSSQL 10, uh, MSSQL slash data. So I'm just going to copy that path. And what I'm going to do is just change these here. So I've got three here to change. Just make sure that you don't put any extra slashes in there. And that looks so good. And with that, I'm going to click on execute. The so command's completed successfully. And if I just go to databases here and go refresh, I can see that I've got my RSA database here. Now, if I'm going to just jump back to my vCenter server, so there's just one more step that needs to be done, and that's to create the users that are going to be authenticating on the database. So to create the users, they've also provided another script here, which is RSA IMS Lite MS SQL Setup users.sql. So I'm going to copy that across to my SQL server. Okay, and now I'm going to switch back to my SQL server. Let's go to that directory. And let's double click on Setup Users script. So we're in the Setup Users script here. So basically all we need to do here is go to the create login RSA DB, DBA and just in red here we've got change DBA password. So in this what we're going to do is just enter in a password that we'd like to use with the user RSA underscore DBA and we'll do the same thing again with RSA user. Now just in this tutorial I'm going to use the same password but I don't recommend you do this in a production environment for obvious reasons but just for simplicity in this tutorial we're going to use the same password so that's about all you need to change in this script and with that I'm going to click execute the commands completed successfully and if I just go to security logins and actually I don't even need to refresh it is here RSA underscore DBA and RSA underscore user so now let's flip back to our vCenter server let's minimize that so now we have all the information that we need to enter into here. So our database name is RSA. The host name of the SQL server, of my SQL server anyway, is VMSQL1. And here I'm going to select Use Manually Created DB Users. So for my database username, I'm just going to simply type RSA user and my password that I entered in previously. And for my database DBA, that was RSA underscore DBA and my password also that I entered into the script. And let's click next. Okay, in this screen it asks you for the fully qualified name of your single sign-on server. And I'm actually installing the single sign-on server on the same server as vCenter. So that's why you see VMVC1. And let's click next. Okay, in this screen for the security support provider, I've actually created um, a service account for this. So I'm just going to enter in the username, my password. So this user is sitting on, the, on my domain VM lab. And I'll click Next. We're going to be installing single sign on into the default directory. Click Next. So as you can see here, the HTTPS port is running on 7444. So what I usually do is just take a screen capture of these ports just for reference. And for now I'm just going to save this onto the desktop. It's SSO ports. Okay, so 7444, we'll click next. And let's click install. Installation will begin. Okay, so this error has popped up. Identity source discovery error. Now in uh, the VMware knowledge base, if you actually search on this error, there comes up a link. And in the link, it says that the cause of this is because automatic discovery of an Active Directory domain can sometimes fail, usually due to environmental reasons such as security restrictions. So you can safely click OK and the installation will continue. And all we need to do is manually add an identity source later on. 
So in the resolution steps, it says to skip ahead in installation components and install the vSphere web client after the vCenter single sign-on installation completes, and then manually add a domain as an identity source, and then resume installing any components that failed to install previously. So I'm going to click OK here. Okay, and single sign-on's now completed. So I'm going to click Finish.